peninsular plateau of India. Let me tell you first, plateau, there are the different relief features, generally used to call plain. There are the two types of plain. One is the depositional plain. Deposited by water. So they are known as fluvial plain. And some are the depositional plain by wind. Are known as lowest plain. Simultaneously, erosional plains. Erosional plains are like er eroded by water, are known as penny plain. So then, what are plains are uniformly plain? These are the depositional plain. When deposition takes place, it is perfectly in horizontal uh, strata plain but when an undulated topography is eroded it undulated topography is eroded this is also a plane this is also a plane but not plane like this geometrical plane it looks like a geometrical plane from delhi to all the way to kanpur to banaras to patna to to to, to malda it's perfectly in a linear order no undulation gentle slope say uh, 50 centimeter per kilometer, 30 centimeter per kilometer, gentle slope. 30 centimeter is one feet. One feet decline in one kilometer is a perfectly uniformly gentle plane. This is depositional plane. So these are the erosional plane. After erosion, this type of penny planation developed. But some undulated features are also visible over here. Sometimes some but this is also a plane, some undulated features are there. If you see one hillock, one rock, left out rock, though it is all converted into a plane, it's not mountain, it's also a plane. But one obstruction is left behind, which is in the last stage of uniformita uniformitarianism. So this last stage, these type of undulated relief features are known as monad knocks. Monad so, monad so in erosional features some monad knocks are left behind but in depositional features no monad knocks now apart from that another is the plateau plateau is a, a, a flat topped undulated topography so it is not necessarily that it is uniformly plain like this you cannot find because Nature is uh, not made by geographical line system. We have different erosional features, depositional features, tectonic activities. So sometimes when if I say this is uh, overall in broader perspective, this table land is pronounced as a plateau. This plateau can be 300 meter high. This can be 3000 meter high. This can be 4,000 meter high. One of the world's highest plateau, Tibetan plateau is 4,200 meter high. Pamir plateau, roof of the world, which is pronounced as, it is again 4,100 meter high. You know Pamir plateau, where all the young fold mountains are radiating in all the direction, Tian Shan, Kyunlun, Karakoram, Jaskar, Ladakh, Himalayas, Hindukus, they all originate, radiate from the nodal point from a plateau that is called Pamir Plateau. It is 4100 meter high table land. India's one of the Pakistan occupied district of India called Baltistan. Balti is a tribe found in, 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 in that region. They are basically <coughs> shepherd used to rear uh, goats and sheep because goat and sheep are the two. Uh, uh, cattle which could sustain in most adverse climate and most adverse relief. In Rajasthan you will find sheep and goat, most adverse climate. 
in 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 himalaya you will find sheep and goat most at most adverse terrain so this is so only that these two animals can so they are as high as sometimes 4000 meter high sometimes as high as sometimes 300 meter high so it their their height is not well defined only the shape is there when the top is conical if i can convert it into like this this may be hill if i further increase the height or the slope when slope is more than 15 degree it is generally pronounced as more than 1500 a uh, 15 degree continuously up to 1000 meter height that is called mountain if it is less than 100 meter height it is known as hill hills are generally up to 1000 meter height if it is more than uh, 1000 meter uh, high altitude they are known as mountains so this we are discussing the third this this plateau plateau of peninsular means where a landmass is encircled by water body from three sides you can say this is the this is this is the this landmass is a triangular landmass this is bay of bengal this is arabian sea this is indian ocean from three side it is encircled by water body that's why this triangulation shape is known as peninsular plateau so it is a table land encircled by water uh we'll discuss this peninsular plateau this peninsular plateau this peninsular plateau of india i would say plateau is divided into two parts rather three parts three parts part number 1 is known as central foreland second is known as deccan plain third is known as silong plain yesterday i i i gave you uh, the, the, the some basic detail of the uh, purvanchal hills so garo khasi jenti are not the part of purvanchal they are the part of peninsular plateau they are the part of silong plateau so this is central foreland if i say this is the same this is the shape of the peninsular plateau uh you can say 60% of the total geographical area of india is covered by this plateau 60% geographical area approximately here this is all triangular there is a rift valley you can say like this this is the rift valley and north of this rift valley is known as central foreland and south of rift valley is known as deccan and the third there is though it is in continuity below the surface this landmass is continuous but because of geosynclinal because this landmass is pushing in this direction so while pushing it the some of the parts slide it down so it 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 like this is the one this is table land silong plateau this is you can say chota nagpur plateau c and p and this is silong so this is c and p chota nagpur plateau and this is the silong plateau uh, silong plateau sp so though this land mass is one but because of the compression this is called geosyncline you know syncline and anticline when the larger area is syncline downward 
that is called geosyncline and this geosyncline was later gradually filled with sandy material brought by the Ganga and Brahmaputra so it converted into a paniplanation so it is not a planation, depositional feature it's a uniformly Bengal plain you can say or sometimes we used to pronounce Gangia plain or Ganga plain sometimes known as Gangia plain so this is though this landmass is same it is not visible here this is the plain here Ganga plain you can say so these are the uh, three different relief features of peninsular plateau now come on to uh, this region here it is the central foreland there is a rift valley called Narmada rift valley this rift valley is Narmada and Narmada is the river north of this rift valley this landmass is tilted northward why it is tilted northward because it is pushing Himalaya it is pushing towards the Himalayan system so it subsided so its slope is towards north all the rivers from here you can say uh, Mahi river goes like this Chambal Gambhir, Chipra, Kalisin, uh, uh, Kain, Betwa, all these rivers they move like this, they move northward. What it shows? It shows that this stable land is slided towards north. So this is the one area from where all the rivers are going towards north. You can say Chambal river, Kalisin river, Chipra river. Kain river, Parvati river, Kali Sindh river, all these rivers are going towards north. The movement, parallel movement of all the rivers on this plateau is showing that central foreland is tilted northward. Isn't it? If you see the Deccan plateau, because of the force, it has tilted in southeast direction. Southeast tilt. This has tilted in southeast direction. All the rivers, whether it is Mahanadi river or, or it is the Godavari river or it is the Krishna river or it is the Kaveri river, all these rivers are going in southeast direction and making the delta in the eastern coast of India. So, in which direction this Deccan plateau is tilted? Southeast. So this average height of this western part is approximately 900 meter and average height of this eastern part is approximately 300 meter. So it is tilted by 600 meter. So 600 meter tilt is there. Average. This is a broad connotation. Clear? Now come over to the central foreland. Central foreland is basically divided into three relief features north of this one relief feature is this one relief feature which is up to Delhi we are sitting on the tip of this peninsular plateau we are sitting here on Aravali so and, and, and then this complete Aravali is the part of peninsular plateau then there is east of Aravali this entire region such a large area is called Malwa Plateau. This is Aravli. And there is a linear mountain range in linear order which divided into many branches in the east. It is called Vindhyas. Vindhyachal mountain. So central foreland is constituted by three different relief features. One is Aravli. One is Malwa Plateau. Malwa is basically composed of lava. So the during Archean period, when earth was cooling down, so lava erupted from the interior of the earth crust and it spread horizontally, formed a tabular plateau. Horizontal shape of the plateau. This is a, again a fold mountain. This is also a fold mountain because mountains form only because of the compressor. So this Aravli was one time, it was taller than the, this Aravli was taller than the Himalayas. So same was Vindhyas. Vindhyas and Aravli is formed during which period? Caledonian mountain period. 
Caledonian means Silurian and Devonian time pe uh, period of Paleozoic time era. So this is uh, basically now come over to Aravli. How Aravli look like? Uh, uh, so this is basic introductory part of this uh, plateau and while discussing this this is uh, you can say Aravli if I construct the Aravli here Aravli is like this This is uh, Aravli up to Delhi. It starts from Gujarat, North Gujarat, you can say Palampur. And it is quite wide in the south, as wide as 90 km wide in south. And when we move towards north, it, this is Jaipur here. In, from Jaipur onward, it is not in continuity. Here you know, it is in continuous feature. This relief feature looks like in continuity, but here it disappeared. A lowest plain, valley formation looks like all sandy. Then again a mountain range appeared. Then again disappeared, then reappeared and, and it is only up to here. So it divided into two branches. From Jaipur onward, one branch is called Delhi branch, another branch is called Rivadi branch. It moves like this to, and it goes to Rivadi. And it comes to Delhi via Sona, you know, Rashtrapati Bhavan, Tughlaqabad Fort, Sona Hill Station, and, 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 and your Delhi University, the Vice Chancellor's office is on the uh, Aravli Ridge. And, and the last point is, you know, Delhi Wazirabad, uh, where uh, the Nazafgarh drain. Nazafgarh drain, you must be knowing one? Yes, sir. The, 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 this is passing through the Shivaji College. It take complete circle, it take complete where the ridge ends, it joins Yamuna. Actually, it is not a drain. Historically, it was a seasonal river. Non-perennial uh, non river. The water of this entire area, uh, it was coming all the way. So this is uh, of these hills. This river, because this is Yamuna here. So this is river Yamuna here and it joined Yamuna once it crossed. Later we developed the habitation over here. Humne ispe abadi bana di. So what happened? This river has disappeared. It lost its catchment because of the intensification in agriculture and diversion of the water for irrigational activities. So only remnants of the river are, are there. So the, the name of the seasonal river is Sahibi River. So it was a river earlier, Sahibi River, and now it converted into a Ganda Nala. So this this uh, uh, this uh, uh, river takes the uh, join the Yamuna once it crossed this ridge. Uh, uh, so this is uh, Aravli, and this is a, a relict mountain, relict mountain ridge and it is composed of uh, metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks means this, this is so old the basic nature of the rocks has changed. Basic nature of the rock means uh, a, a rock has four or five basic properties. Number one uh, uh, layering and when the rock formation takes place it develops the layers it develops the porosity it develops the bedding plane it develops the uh, chemical reactions if chemicals are there react like These are the like sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks have layers, 
one layer upon another layer they piled up uh, one lamina upon another lamina so layering is there porosity is there if we put water water will go down it will percolate down they have the bedding plane sometimes you may see some stones uh, we have stone I'll, I'll show you tomorrow some stones uh, uh, basically have layers one layer ends another layer starts maybe different type of stone then another different type of stone so different layering is visible this this happens only in sedimentary rocks and the chemical reaction means if it is, if it is the uh, gypsum rock salt calcium carbonates anything any chemical composition they will react in sedimentary rocks but in metamorphic rocks they change the chemical composition as well as the physical properties what happens once sedimentary becomes metamorphic layers disappear layers disappear like uh, limestone limestone is a rock composed of basically composed of calcium carbonate but once it metamorphized it becomes marble and marble you may not find any layering marble is one complete rock so layering are not visible porosity this is impervious if you put the if you put water uh, uh, on, on on marble it will not percolate down but if you put water on uh, limestone water will disappear it will be absorbed so this becomes impervious and bedding plane compact rock one compact rock bedding planes are not visible compact rock and this becomes inert this rock uh, uh, these rocks becomes inert inert means no chemical reaction takes place if if we put the water on uh, you can say marble there will be no reaction but if you put the water on uh, 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 limestone there will be reaction will start immediately so these are the metamorph so metamorphism depends on the nature of rocks compression temperature pressure and time because they are very old they have gone through series of time scales because this landmass formed before the breakup of pangaea this landmass aravalli the formation of aravalli have taken place in silurian and devonian before carboniferous period it means uh, uh, this uh, landmass was originally its formation have taken place very close to antarctica between antarctica and south africa so this landmass slided gradually slided by 1 cm per year towards northeast northeast and it slided all the way from antarctica this landmass segregated from antarctica and shifted to cross the equator shifted to eurasian plate while shifting such a long distance in such a long time period this landmass aravalli has gone through series of tilting folding and, and, and the compressions so it has changed its uh, rock structure and it has changed its uh, relief features also so these rocks are basically it is composed originally it was of uh, igneous rocks and these igneous converted into again metamorphized and what are the metamorphic rocks it is composed of you know from where the marble comes all rajasthan marble marble knees cyst slate and quartzite most important quartzite so himalay is composed of sedimentary rocks basically sandstone shale limestone though in some of the greater himalayan part of uh, uh, himadri and lesser himalaya 
in himalaya also found some pieces some parts where igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks used to form they are uplifted but largely it is composed himalaya is largely composed by sedimentary rock this mountain range is this is almost 800 km long from you can say palampur palampur is in north gujarat and up to delhi delhi is here you can say up to delhi so this is 90 km wide in south but when we move towards north its width decreases and from jaipur onward it divided into uh, it is not in continuity there it is irregular with irregular uh, continuity it found and this entire area because all in the east this area is the desert so desert lowest plains are spread up to this area so lowest deposits found between these ranges so this is uh, one but how uh, this is relic all relic mountains are flat topped they look like flat they look like plateau the top is not conical so it is flat its highest peak is in the south here so it is what you call it and uh, mount abu mount abu what is the height of mount abu 1700 uh, bete ha uh, rajasthan ke bahut sare student hai mount abu ki height batao 1700 मैंने इसको क्लाइम किया है मैं इसकी चोटी पे शिवाजी कॉलेज का फ्लैग लेके खड़ा हुआ सो दिस इज वन टाइम लॉन्ग बैक वन एक्सकर्जन ऑफ शिवाजी कॉलेज स्टूडेंट्स हैव बीन टू माउंट आबू एंड हमने सब एक्सपेडिशन किया और इसके पीक पे जाके खड़े हुए थे सो दिस इज 1722 नेम ऑफ द पीक ऑफ दिस माउंट आबू इज द रीजन नेम ऑफ द पीक इज गुरु शिखर Guru Sikhar is the peak. This is the highest peak. As we move towards north, its height decreases, decreases, and in Delhi, its height decreases as low as 250 meters. 250 meters. Height of Jaipur is here at this point is approximately 350 meters. So as we move towards south, its height increases. Continuity becomes regular, getting wide in the south. and it is getting narrow in the north so it is sliding but let me tell you beyond this as i told you the the central foreland is tilted northward tilt ho gaya na plain se aise ho gaya it is i said it is visible up to delhi but it in continuity it is continuously Uh, it has gone up to himalayas it is up to haridwar but it is not visible because it slided down and it is up to haridwar which is not visible it is filled with the sand here came to know because this is the landmass which pushed himalayan system to uplift to increase its height though it is not visible beyond delhi now let me construct one more cross section of this uh, uh, relief feature then uh, aravli say aravli a relict mountain composed of metamorphic rock and it is relict relict mountains have all the why we call it relic i am using the word relic again and again relic have weathering weathering only no upliftment denudation erosion and what type of weathering it is having block separations it is having uh, block separation it is having uh, granular disintegration
it is having x 